Hey guys, it's Larry Greenberg, and today we're going to take a look at the Sprint Overdrive Mobile Hotspot. This is a 3G and 4G mobile hotspot from Sprint that allows you to connect up to five devices and gain internet access wherever you can get a Sprint signal. Now, 4G is only available in select cities across the country. I'm in Philadelphia. It is available here, however, not in my house. I have to drive about 15 miles to grab a 4G signal with this device. So the device is selling for $99, and it requires a two-year agreement. And then you have a couple plans to choose from. The plan that I'm using is a $60 a month plan, which includes 5 gigabytes of 3G data and unlimited 4G data. So it's a little bit restricting. You only get 5 gig of 3G, but again, you get unlimited 4G. The device comes in this kind of hard, shiny, lacquer-looking box. And it's pretty simplistic. There's not much to it. You do get the device, and then, of course, you get the charger for it. It is a mini USB charger uh, that you get. So you get the cable, and then you get the uh, wall adapter as well. And then here's the device itself. You can see it's you know very similar to the box. It's very shiny, uh, mirror almost. You can see your reflection in it. Along the device, you do have the port to charge it. That's the mini USB. You also have a slot for a micro SD card. What's really cool about that is you can put a micro SD card in there. And then once you're connected to that, the network, you can actually upload files to it. And then any of the other users that you allow access to your mobile hotspot, remember you can have up to five, can then access files on here. So great if you're like at a business meeting and you know, you're know you all sharing this connection and you need to swap files back and forth, you can just upload them to this little card right here and you know everyone can pull the files off. On the top, there's an audio switch on and off. That actually will alert you when you've lost a signal, when someone's joined the network, when you've joined, when you've disconnected, a bunch of different audio notifications that yeah, that utilizes. I'm gonna power it on because it does take a few seconds to actually come on. And why I do that, let me show you the case that I actually bought. There is a case for it as well. It's basically a silicone skin. It retails for $15, there we go. It's got cutouts for all the ports and uh, you know the buttons and stuff. So it lines up perfectly. Just really more of a shock and impact and scratch protectant more than anything else. So the immediately, the one thing you'll notice about the overdrive that makes it different than the MiFi is it has an LCD display. So you can actually see what's going on, which is really nice. The MiFi has a couple little LEDs to let you know that it's on and that it's connected, but nothing else. You basically have to get all the other information from the computer when you're connected, including like the battery and you know how long you've been connected and how much data you've been using. I'll show you in a second. Everything is displayed on here itself. And why that's booting up, I've got my iPad here, and um, what I'll do is I'll connect to the overdrive while it's booting up, and I'll run a quick speed test. Unfortunately, the 3G at my house is not very fast, um, and I'll show you that in a second. So the overdrive has booted up, as you can see, and there are a few indicators on here. You can see signal strength, just like you do it on a cell phone. You can see that I'm connected to 3G. If I was in a 4G area, that would switch to 4G, of course. The little silhouette of a person, right now it's just empty. That means no one's connected. Now, as I connect to it, you'll see it'll actually fill up solid. And then if I were to connect more devices, you would start to see a number build next to it. So it would be solid, then there'd be a one, two, three, you know, all the way up to five devices that can connect. And then, of course, you've got your battery indicator. I'm getting about four hours of usage with this, which is quite nice. There's the name of the overdrive itself. That's just like your home network name. You can name it whatever you want. On the bottom left-hand corner, you can see how much data has actually been transmitted. So when I connect to it, you'll actually see that start to increase, and I'll know how much data I've used on that session. And then on the bottom right is a timer letting me know how long I've had the overdrive on for. So what I'm going to do now is actually connect to the overdrive. And in a second, you'll see that this will actually um, you know, fill up solid, and there it is, meaning that I'm actually connected to it. So let's hop over to the speed test app. And let me move this into frame a little bit. And I'll show you how fast or slow this actually is in my area. Unfortunately, again, I don't have 4G to show you just how incredibly fast the 4G speed is. And I'm going to start the speed test now. And we'll see what kind of rates I get. Again, it's I did one here. You can see in the bottom of the thin corner, 1.25 Mbps. That's pretty slow compared to 12.52, which is my home you know, Wi-Fi. 3.9, that was on 3G on the AT&T service from my iPad. It's relatively slow, guys. However, one thing to keep in mind, when you're doing browsing and you know emailing and things like that, 
it's really not that painfully slow. You know, where this is going to come into play, these slow speeds are, if I were to watch like a streaming video, I might notice some latency when I went to watch it. But for general, you know, emailing and internet tasks, what I do most of the time with my iPad and my iPhone, I'm not really that concerned with these slower speeds. It's not enough that it's going to be an issue for me. And again, 4G is out there in my area where I can access that blazing fast you know, broadband speed when I need to. So it's almost done the speed test. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty similar to, you know, the 1.25 that I got earlier. Um, you know, I'm just in a slow 3G area for some reason. Yeah, almost the same, 1.23. So not great. But again, when I launch, let's go into Atomic Web. And you can see, you know, I'll go to, let's see, we'll go to a site, we'll go to Yahoo, and we'll see how fast it loads up. And there we go. You know, it's not it's not terrible. You can see it's almost halfway, almost done, and there it goes. I mean, that's pretty fast, guys. You know, the numbers might show that it's slower than it really is, but when you're doing, again, the tasks that most of us do on a device like the iPad or our iPhone, you know, light computing, these speeds are okay. You know, it, it's it's really not an issue. So the device screen does shut off when, um, you know, after a certain time, if you want to view the LCD to see, you know, your information, all you do is hit the button once. And there you can see I've used 8.83 megabytes of data so far over a three-minute connection. Let me show you real quick. I will connect my iPhone to the overdrive so you can see the little number there appear to let you know that there's another device now also on the network. All right, so now what I've done is connected both my iPad and my iPhone 3GS to the overdrive, and you can see the little two up there next to the battery indicator letting me know that our two devices now connected to the overdrive. So that's just good kind of to keep track. If you've got more than one person connected to your device, you know how many people are you know, connected at one time, and you can monitor that. So that has been a brief look at the Sprint Overdrive. Again, on sale now at Sprint for $99. Requires a two-year agreement, run you about $70 a month for the monthly service. If you have any questions about this device or anything else, feel free to drop me a line. Otherwise, you have a great day.